grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of God. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us pray together. Good morning and welcome to our joint Faith Cockeysville and Salem Catonsville Advent service. This is our third Sunday in Advent and we are so glad that you are joining us. A special welcome to all visitors who are joining us this morning. If you would like to take a moment to introduce yourselves in the comment section of Facebook or YouTube, we would love to greet you uh, and welcome you to our service. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a few announcements for the faith community today. A reminder that we have poinsettias available uh, up until December 15th. Uh, you can make those purchases. We are asking for donations of about $10 to cover the costs. Uh, you can get, uh, give in honor or in memory of a loved one, uh, and we will be posting uh, that list uh, in our upcoming newsletter just before Christmas Eve. So if you'd like to purchase a poinsettia, please send in those names so that we can uh, put them in our upcoming newsletters. 
Uh, again, you have until December 15th to place those orders. Also, uh, we are collecting funds for Pedonia Elementary School. Uh, there are many families at this time who are struggling to put food on the table. And while Pedonia has a wonderful program that is giving out food, the demand is higher than they have uh, availability. And so they are asking for funds to help cover uh, costs of distributing gift cards to local grocery stores so that families have groceries for this upcoming holiday season. And so we are collecting uh, to help uh, purchase gift cards to Target, Food Lion and Walmart, uh, and if you are able to contribute uh, to that, uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful uh, opportunity in which an anonymous, anonymous donor has pledged to match any uh, gift that it has that comes in for this process. And so, dollar for dollar, if you give twenty-five dollars, uh, that'll be a total gift of fifty dollars going towards this effort. So, thank you so much. Uh, for your contributions to help families in need during this holiday season at Pedonia International Elementary School. Finally, today is the last day to send in your Christmas Eve greetings so that we can get them in our Christmas Eve service. You will see our wonderful faces throughout the service because of these videos. So please send those in. Uh, if you have any questions on how to uh, upload them to the Google Drive or how to email them to Sid Meyer or myself, please do not hesitate to contact myself or Sid uh, as soon as possible so that you, we can walk you through that process. And a reminder that our Christmas Eve service will be fully online on Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve, December 24th. Uh, we are just so uh, excited about this service. It is going to have joint music with the Salem uh, Faith and Salem Virtual Choir, uh, but it is going to be just a wonderful service, and we are so excited for you to join us that evening. Please share it widely uh, so that we have as many uh, family, visitors, and guests join us for that evening. I'll now turn it over to Pastor Dave with some announcements for Salem. Thank you, Pastor Micah. Good morning, and again, welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is David Asendorf, and my colleague Sarah Garrett Cray uh, is here for the service too, so the three of us will be uh, leading this morning's worship. A few announcements for the Salem community. We continue to gather monies for our annual Thanksgiving Christmas hunger appeal. Uh, that money is given to four different ministries for the Catonsville Emergency Assistance uh, located in, in Catonsville and the Maryland Food Bank which is uh, uh, feeds uh, regionally around uh, the state of Maryland. Also the ELCA World Hunger Appeal that does both uh, domestic and international work and Lutheran World Relief which is focused uh, primarily on international assistance. So you can make those donations either by sending a check to the church and, of course, note, noting it, uh, or you can go online and make a donation for the Thanksgiving Christmas Hunger Appeal. So thanks for that. Our Christmas garden, uh, we're still sponsoring uh, uh, flowers, poinsettias for the chancel, so if you would like to donate to that, uh, you can look on the midweek mailer for information on how to do that. And the children's home, every year for many, many years, we've been collecting uh, gifts for the children at the home. And if you would like to participate in that, again, I direct you to that midweek mailer for all the information and how you can uh, join in with that. We will be gathering photos uh, this Advent to include in our Christmas Eve worship service. So if you would like to send that Christmas greeting photo, you can do that by uh, sending it to Guy Davis. Are we going to have your email right there? Yes, then? Yes. Okay. And his email is being displayed on this screen with the magic of technology. Uh, so please feel free to, to join in with that. Uh, so talking about Christmas Eve, we'll be uh, having our Christmas Eve services separate, Faith will be doing theirs, Salem will be doing theirs. The Salem service will premiere at 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And then finally, just mention to you that yesterday the Salem Players uh, premiered their production, Ladies in Waiting, at Advent to Epiphany, and that's still available for you to watch. It's both on the Salem Facebook page and on YouTube. 
Again, thank you for your patience for all these announcements. It's a busy time of the year, and again, welcome. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Word of God, word of life. Let's read responsibly Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the name. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. And they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
What are you doing? Oh, I'm making a kaleidoscope. What's that? Well, it's kind of a tube and some mirrors, or in this case, some tin foil and wrapped around some cardboard and some beads or sequins, and it's kind of hard to explain. Can I help? Sure. Why don't you put some of these sequins into this section right there? Okay. So, what brought this on? Well, I was thinking about our gospel for today and how it said that Jesus was the light of the world and that John the Baptist was a witness to that light. You see, the Pharisees asked John if he was a prophet or if he thought he was this Messiah person that everybody was waiting for. But John told them that he wasn't either of those things. Instead, he was a messenger sent to prepare the way for the real light of the world who would be there soon. Got me thinking about how John wasn't the actual light, but he was a witness to the light and how we should be witnesses too and spread the good word about the light into the world. Then I saw how the crystals on the Christmas tree, these here, saw how they reflect all the different colors onto the rest of the tree and on the wall and made me think of a kaleidoscope. So here we are. <laughs> and let's see, got one more piece there. There, what do you think? Wow, it's so pretty. You know, I like how all the different colored beads and sequins in here are kind of like how we are all different and can reflect the love of God in many different ways. I hadn't thought of that. You're right. We each have our own way of showing God's love through kindness, goodness, and love. Will you pray with me? Of course. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus, the light of the world, to guide us to your wisdom. Help us to be witnesses to that light with kindness, goodness, and love in our lives. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. This is the second week in a row that we are hearing about the infamous character known as John the Baptist. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we get this wild and eccentric baptizer and prophet who shouts at everyone, telling them to repent, or John yelling at religious leaders, calling them, you brood of vipers. When hearing of John the Baptist, many think of this image, an unkempt, wild, dirty, and eccentric man yelling and even condemning any person that he seems to come in contact with. However, this is not the image that we get in today's gospel. That's not the John that we get at all in this fourth gospel. This is a very different John in front of us now. No descriptions of camel's hair or eating locusts, not even really yelling or shouting. Just a man sent by God to testify to the light. One of my favorite depictions of John came from a version of the musical Godspell that I saw back in high school. Back in those days, my parents had season tickets to the Walnut Street Theater, a historic theater in Center City, Philadelphia. Now, Godspell is often depicted as a Fairly simple set design, but filled with colorful clothing and neon lights to go along with the incredible fun, incredibly fun and playful music. But this version was quite different. The show started with the curtain open. The set design depicted a tent community, people experiencing homelessness, living underneath the recognizable Ben Franklin Bridge in Philadelphia. And my favorite character, not loud, not boisterous, but calm and peaceful, begins the show. The lights faded, and the entire theater was completely dark. And an unmiked voice began to sing. 
Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. A soft spotlight shined on him as he walked from the back of the theater towards the stage, walking among the audience seeming to call us to follow him, to see where he was taking us through this dark unknown, singing like a voice calling out in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. He walked onto the stage and looked back out to the audience, beckoning us into the story, calling us to follow him on this path. But as he looked back out into the audience, he seemed to be saying something else that we heard in our gospel text this morning. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. This version of John and the one we receive in our gospel this morning is calm and soothing, almost warming in this Advent season. And here, John makes his role in this great story perfectly clear. I am the voice. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord. John is identifying his sole purpose as being a witness to Christ as a testimony to the work that the Messiah will do in this world. When asked by the priest, John denies being the Messiah. He denies being Elijah. He denies being the prophet. As a witness of God, John takes the attention off of himself and instead points to Jesus. John turns their words around and instead directs us to the Messiah. John points to Christ saying, that is the Son of God, and that is the way I am merely here to tell people to follow him. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. My favorite image in this musical is the character of John looking back out into the audience as an invitation to join the story and to point to where the Messiah will come from, from among us. Among you stands one whom you do not know. During this Advent season, we find ourselves in a different place than we do most years. Many of us usually would be busy at work, studying for finals or finishing projects, preparing concerts and Christmas pageants, purchasing presents and beginning the wonderful wrapping process. In some ways, yes, it is a time of preparation for the Christmas season, but in many ways, in those years, We put off the intentional preparation of preparing our hearts and minds for Christmas because we know that once we get there, once we get to December 24th at 2 p.m., at 5 p.m., at 7 p.m., at 10 p.m., at 11 p.m., or whenever we have our Christmas Eve service, at that moment, we can let our guards down. We can sink into the break of Christmas vacation, and at that point, in the sanctuary surrounded by candlelight and Christmas carols, then we can welcome Christ into our lives. 
Once everything else has taken place, once we sort out all of the other chaos in our day-to-day lives, then we can find a pew in a church on Christmas Eve, and then we can see Christ. And yet, this year in particular, I know that there are so many who are desperately wishing we had that night, December 24th, Christmas Eve, to just fall into To have that night when we so desperately want to experience joy, or even more, to have a Savior who will just make it all okay. This Christmas is going to be different. But it doesn't mean that all hope is lost. Remembering of the words of John this morning, among you, stands one whom you do not know. As John reminds us, Christ is already among us. Yes, while we wait for the coming Christmas day, we already know that Christ has been born 2,000 years ago in the little town of Bethlehem. We know that our Savior came to bring good news and great joy to all the world And we know the rest of the story, too. That this Savior came to show the amazing love of God. And we know that Christ has died. And we know that Christ is risen. And we know that Christ is here, even now. Among you stands one whom you do not know, says John. Christ is here. Christ is present with us, dear church. And so even through this Christmas even though this Christmas season will feel different, even though many of us will not gather in the physical space of a church surrounded by friends and candlelight and hymns, Christ will be with us wherever we are. Jesus isn't waiting for us to check off all of our lists and sing all of the carols before he comes. We don't have to have everything right with ourselves and with the world in order for Christmas to happen. Jesus is present now. Jesus is present in our homes as we participate in online worship together across time and space. Jesus is present in our phone calls and video chats with friends, family, and loved ones. Jesus is present in our Wednesday evening fellowship hours at Salem and Faith as we share our joys and sorrows and lift one another up in prayer. Jesus is present to celebrate in the moments of laughter and joy and present to comfort us in the moments of sadness and grief. And Jesus will be present on Christmas Eve. Jesus will be present with us in each of our homes. Christ will be among us, still declaring the good news of God's grace and love for each and every one of us. And so how do we prepare our hearts to hear those words this year? knowing that we won't fall back on previous traditions to guide our way? How do we make a path in our hearts to hear this amazing message that God's love and peace and grace have come to this world in the form of Jesus Christ? That Christ has come for us. That the one that is coming is already here. Christ is in our midst, and we can see him among us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive the one who has come, Christ who is among us. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen.
Our hymn of the day is Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church, gather today. For food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others. Share until all are fed. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts. and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, those who produce and direct online worship, and all who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of all the nations, help us to raise up leaders to govern with wisdom and fairness. May those nations experiencing unrest, violence, oppression, may they find the path to peace. Especially, we pray for the people of Ethiopia, Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of the powerful and the helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. 
Bestow your spirit upon these communities of faith and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. We pray especially for the healing of our world, for all those who are suffering with COVID-19, and for all of those caregivers and medical professionals and researchers who seek to bring healing. In our Salem congregation, we pray for the continued healing of Marcy Schuett, Peggy Medicus, Tom Dawson, the husband of Val Ponsini's niece after suffering a stroke, continued healing for Scott Graham and Patricia Kempton. We pray for Joey Morgan's dad, Denny, and Beth Massey's sister, Sue, who are both fighting cancer. And we pray for Jim Carney's sister, who suffered a stroke this week. We pray that you would surround them all with your healing, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Today we also pray for John and Kathy, Margaret and Bob, Albertina, Martha, for Keith as he continues to recover from COVID-19, for the Lund, Lund family after testing positive for COVID-19, and for Patricia Hoffman as she undergoes chemotherapy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and hear our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace with one another. Peace. We deeply appreciate your support and generosity through your offerings and contributions to our congregations. Uh, you, of course, can send checks to uh, our churches, or you could go online to make a donation. Thank you very much.
Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the creator of the stars watch over your advent waiting. May the long-expected Savior fill you with love. May the unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, Hark the Glad Sound. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.